Thank you very much. Uh, I'm actually honored to be here today, and I thank the organizers, uh, the um, uh, Kanakadasa Study and Research Center, Kannada Chair, JNU, and um, Karnataka Sangam, uh, Sangam in Delhi. Uh, I'm also uh, extremely grateful for, to you for, this, um, for allowing me to be here. And of course, you had a very, very rich um, session just now. And there is very little I can say after what you saw and what you heard. But I think it is important to go over some of the things that had been um, uh, talked about in the, in the last session. Um, both the speakers, I think, had focused on bhakti as performance. And that, I think, is extremely important uh, because it is the performative aspect that leads you into the many, many diverse areas of bhakti and also perhaps allows, and allows a kind of flexibility uh, that crosses borders, that transcends time and space. Uh, it is also important to do this for various other reasons, as was pointed out by the speakers. Professor Satyanath uh, spoke theoretically, and uh, Professor Bilimale gave um, uh, you know, actual instances in order to uh, demonstrate the truth of Professor Satyanath's uh, findings. Professor Satyanath began by talking about a paradigm shift. Uh, and the paradigm shift that took place when there was a movement away from the river-based agrarian system to the tank-based agrarian system. In one place there was the king, and in the tank-based agrarian system he highlights the bhakta. Apart from that, of course, there were other moves which he, which he talked about. Uh, the, uh, the, um, you know, the a paradigm shift takes place in bhakti because the religious space uh, becomes open to artisans, to agrarians, and also to non-agrarian groups. And uh, through this, Professor Satyanath also uh, uh, tried to suggest that these open up towards pluralist perspectives in a way that had not been possible before. Of course, the focus is also on transmediality. On, uh, on, on the fact that we need to shift our focus from the uh, scriptocentric to the phonocentric and the body-centric. Uh, he talked about, in a very systematical fashion, he also talked about a new methodology, the requirement, the need for some kind of a methodology, perhaps a new methodology. Not that, of course, a lot of work has also been done in this area, but I think he is also leading us to a, a new direction. And there he is talking about you know, more elaborate systems of periodization, um, which he showed us, gave a few examples. Uh, he talks also about looking at the different public spheres. Uh, through the different periods. Bhakti is ever alive. The streams of bhakti are ever flowing. And uh, so there, is a di there are different kinds of receptions. There are different kinds of public spheres. Uh, and, uh, but of course, he also talked about the nationalist take the regional and the sectarian uh, spaces. And, um, and it is important to, you know, not to perhaps ignore the public sphere, the different kinds of reception that, were, that, that have been accorded to bhakti in order to move away from uh, bhakti, uh, from the perception of bhakti as a homogeneous identity. Um, this, in short, was what Professor Satyanath and also Professor Bilimale was trying to, to, to lead to. Um, bhakti, in any case, is a new way of looking at texts and weaving them into a series of indigenous performative forms. Uh, this, I think the focus on the performative is also important because there within the performative you have, I mean you have a training of the imagination perhaps. Uh, the training of the imagination also in an ethical direction. 
and uh, there is a lot of creativity at the center. And it is this creativity that is important today, particularly because I think it can possibly prevent minds from becoming rigid. And it is this, you know, it is this aspect of uh, the, the performative in bhakti that needs to be stressed again and again. Uh, <coughs> that is an important point. The other important point um, that I received was also that, of course, uh, bhakti belongs to all times and to all places. So reading, read, uh, reading Kanaka Dasa during the last few days. Uh, incidentally, I also want to mention that uh, you know I was trying to look at internet resources for Kanaka Dasa, and somehow I didn't find too many. And I wonder why this should be the case today. Uh, you know, it is possible today to have, uh, you know, to have access to. I mean, if we want to at least to have access to the works of bhakti from different places in India through the internet too. So uh, this is my request to uh, to all of us, perhaps, to who are uh, you know working with bhakti. Um, yes. So elements in bhakti belong to all times and to all places. Reading re re reading Kanaka Dasa, I felt that yes, Kanaka Dasa's poetry was foundational. And by foundational, I do not mean, uh, and, and I do think that when a text is foundational, it is also capable of moving, of moving beyond borders. And uh, because it is so firmly grounded in a place, that it is capable, it is because it is foundational, that it is capable of moving across, across borders. So it is, uh, so there is a firm center, and it is this firm center that allows it to remain intact while crossing all kinds of borders, uh, intersecting, and allowing its expressions to become manifold by way of reception. Uh, yes, uh, I was struck by Kanaka Das's works. Uh, you know, the, 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 the book that you kindly circulated um, gave us a taste to, you know, wanted, made us feel that we want to know a lot more. And because I, 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 for instance, was struck by the complete mastery over the self that he has. This is something that we come across in all Santa poets, and that is what perhaps the meaning of the word Santa conveys to, to, to us today. Uh, he does not, you know, there is, of course, uh, there is this mastery over the ego, as you referred to this morning. And, um, but I think, you know, one can go very far with this mastery over the ego. The, 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 you know, it is a, the, a whole question of, uh, the, of turning aside, turning away from the anthropocentric world view. That is, man is at the center. No, man is not at the center. Man is a part of everything else. It is the biocentric view that is important, not the anthropocentric view that everything is important, a stone is important, that you know, the, the, the water, the source, uh, everything that exists is important, not just man. If we have this perspective, the biocentric perspective at the center, then things change. Then you know, the, uh, the crisis that is, the, that is soon to overcome this world, I think, uh, can be avo averted perhaps to some extent if we go back to the biocentric worldview, leaving aside the anthropocentric one, it leads us to an ecological perspective. Uh, it leads us to a view where we will try to work for the well-being of all things that exist. With, this wor words, with these words, and again by thanking all of you, and particularly the August gathering that is here, well, members on the stage, uh, I thank you once more.